ways of your world don't mean much to me Would never be conformed to the way you think Extraordinary story. He's Lee Thomas, the Emmy Award winning anchor and entertainment reporter for WJBK in Detroit. He suffers from, I guess you'd call it a disease, from vitiligo. He's got a new book out called Turning White, a memoir of change. There you see its cover. What is, what is vitiligo? It's a, a pigment disorder or disease uh, where your, your body actually starts to attack this, the pigment cells in your skin. And it's beyond turning white, Larry. Uh, you actually are void of color. I, I simply titled the book was Turning White, but it's void of color. I'm, I'm pigmentless in parts of my skin. For lighter skinned people, it's not as noticeable, but for darker skinned people, it's So it can happen to Caucasians? It can happen to anyone, any age, usually between 25 and 45, but I've seen people as young as three, six, seven who male have disease. Female. male and okay. female, yep. During the first break, Lee is going to take some mm -hmm. wipes here, yeah. and he is, uh, well, he's makeup now. <laughs> he's this kind of odd. He's being made up to look like he really looks in real life. In other words, this is him. He is a black individual. Right. When he does the wipes, we'll see how he... Well, I tell you what, he wasn't always like this. Let's take a look at what Lee goes through on a typical day at the station. Watch. <laughs> All right, so what I usually do is I come in and I have to put, you know, put the stuff on and prepare. And I have two different kinds of makeup that I use, glam and pow. So I usually start with this. I'm almost out. The transformation begins. The reason I start using two different colors is because Men's beards are usually darker, especially African American men. Their beard lot is usually darker, so it looks more natural that way. I have to do my ears. You can definitely see them on camera. So, Larry, this is it. I've, I've finished putting on all my makeup, and uh, I think I've gotten everything. take it off the first break and reverse it. Is it weird mm -hmm. to make yourself up to look like you really are? I don't know. At this point, I'm very comfortable putting on the makeup, and, and it's really for other people because I know what people, when they see me without makeup, uh, it's hard for them to pay attention to what I'm saying. A lot of times they're staring at my ear or my neck or, or not really paying attention to my words. And when you're on camera, when you're on television and on the news like what I do, I have a great time being there, but I know it's all about the information and not about me. So I try to do as much as I can to focus on the information and not myself. Lee, is there anything dangerous in this, in that, for example, supposing you lived a whole life made up? Um, no, no. The, the, the vitiligo takes your pigment away, and the, the thing that happens from that, it's not contagious, it's not, not life-threatening. But I can get a bad sunburn, which is brand new for me, because right. as an African-American, I never had to deal with a sunburn, Larry. So the first time I got sunburned was on my arm, and I didn't know what it was. I had to ask somebody what, what, what's going on. My arm's red and it itches. So, Put your uh, hands up toward the camera. Sure, so, sure. Where, where can you guys get Let's that? get the full camera on, okay, guys? Mm -hmm. Do sure. away with the mirror. There Thanks. There you go. We crazy yeah, with you can mirrors. see the contrast. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put both of them up. There you go. So you can see it's completely gone at this point. You can see a little bit of pigment starting uh, right in some of these areas. We can see on my wrist. That's where the pigment starts to come back. And, uh, Does and, it come back? Uh, well, it's possible. You know, I know the possibility is there. I've talked to people who have regained pigment, and 80% of the people that uh, have this disease respond to treatment in some fashion. And I have responded to treatment before, but as soon as I stopped the treatment and it was standing in a light booth uh, after putting cream on my body, uh, as soon as I stopped, within weeks, it started to fade again. What did you notice first? I first got it on my scalp, um, and then 
uh, uh, ironically, I got it on my left hand. Uh, I had a few spots on the back of my head. And you can see almost through my hairline yeah, that I you can see, see pigment sure. is gone. Spots on my scalp, both sides, and then on my left hand. So when, uh, you know, the most famous gloved one put on his one glove, he has vitiligo as well. I understand why, because I got it on my left hand, and I started to wear a, one glove when I would do a report. Does Michael Jackson refer to himself as having vitiligo? He does. He said it to Oprah Winfrey. He, he said it to Martin Bashir, a British journalist. Uh, he does have vitiligo, and I could not imagine. There's only a few hundred thousand people that watch me in Detroit, but being the most famous person on the planet and having this disease, when you look one way on an album cover, but when you're at home, you look like the cover of my book there, um, it must have been tough to deal with to have hundreds of millions of people looking at you and having to keep that secret. Was it scary the first time you, like, you looked at the scalp and the wrist? Uh, when it got on my face, I completely freaked out. Um, I thought I was going to lose my job, and my job is my livelihood. I worked my way through college to, to, to be able to do what I love. I love television. It's much respect to be sitting across from you, by the way, my man. I mean, oh, uh, but I worked my way through college and paid for it myself to get there, Larry. And, and when, when my face started changing, I really thought it was the end. Um, and I had to take a walk. I was walking in, working in New York at the time. I had to walk down to the park and just uh, clear my head and, and uh, you know, regain a perspective on life because I really thought that things were over. Uh, when you go on an airplane, are, mm -hmm. you, are you made up or do you... No, when I'm, when I'm traveling... Um, are you stared at? All the time. I was uh, getting gas the other day. And uh, uh, you know how you can see through the pump when, you, when you're pumping gas. A lady, a lady on the other side stopped and she goes, what's wrong with you? And um, I go, uh, besides the gas prices, I'm good. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with me. Um, but it took me a while to get there. There were times before when uh, I would be on an elevator and someone scooted uh, away from me um, and tried not to make eye contact with me um, because they didn't know what it was. Uh, you know, it's ignorance, not mean or malicious ignorance. It's just they don't know what it is. And uh, hopefully, you know, with the book and, and, and with what I'm doing, people will know. Because uh, it all started with a kid. A kid called me and asked me to tell my story so the people will treat him differently. I told, I told him yes. And I've been telling the story ever since on television, in book form. But uh, I, I did not know. So many people didn't know about this disease. Lee Thomas, when we come back, we'll see Lee's transformation. You will witness what he lives with every day without his mask of makeup. He's starting already. The real Lee Thomas, next. Over the years, I've interviewed most of the stars in the Hollywood sky, so to speak. What do you do to make guys feel comfortable? So, you know, I, I, I guess that's something you have to think about. I didn't know I made them feel so uncomfortable. So you give them the chin-ups and the ladies, ah! Oh, just a little oh, chin-up, you know, you saw. It was the behind yeah. the neck. You saw that, right? Yeah, the behind the neck. That's the man joints right there. You very pretty. Would you dance with me? <laughs> they say that's my time. That's your Fox beat. I'm Lee Thomas. We're back on Larry King Live. The book is Turning White, a memoir of change. The author is Lee Thomas, the Emmy award-winning anchor from WJBK in Detroit. He has now uh, put on the wipes and uh, put the wipes on his face and ears and neck. And this is how he looks. When this started, um, you didn't tell your employers, right? How did you hide it? With makeup? Uh, initially, yeah, I covered it with makeup, but it was not, it wasn't this bad. Uh, in the book, you see a progression, and it started off with small little spots that were easier to cover, but as it progressed, I, you know, was put in the position to have to do something. I could keep trying to hide it, and it was difficult to hide it on my hands, or I could just say, look, this is what's happening. I don't know what's going to happen, but as I continue to deal with this, I might want to stop being on TV at some point. Like a 